Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, and a very good afternoon to you from Singapore. I'm Kenneth, uh, so it's my pleasure to be the first to present this morning. So, uh, as we have mentioned earlier on, I am a assistant principal engineer from ST Engineering Marine. So today, I'm thrilled to be given the opportunity to share our SuperSafe series, which was first launched a year ago during Index 2019. The Super Swift series is our solution to coastal defense. As you can see, maritime threats, which includes piracy and maritime terrorism, affects the stability of national and international economies. As you can sh see, uh, shown on the graph on the right, there's a steep increase in the number of uh, incidents reported. Out of the 82 cases, 80 involves armed robbery against ships. This is extremely worrying. So for Singapore, being a strategic position in the maritime hub, it's very important for us to ensure the safety of the waters and expect the unexpected. In an environment where threats are so sudden and unpredictable, it is important for frontline coastal defense force to be well equipped with new capabilities for swift response. FC Engineering understands the need for addressing these issues and aims to provide a solution. So, the design motivation. We have already identified the problem and therefore it's evident to have to provide a solution. For the assessment, so realization is the first step for us to um, you know, embark on this journey. So we need to un understand and identify what are the problems and shortfalls for existing designs. Only then we'll be able to improve, overcome, and also we, we, we're able to understand why conventional designs are not able to meet the needs of modern day problems. How can we improve and make us different from the conventional norm? By combining and leveraging on our past experience that we have acquired over the years, we are able to craft our winning formula. So the Super Swift series is the solution that we have designed based on our winning formula. I will be sharing our innovative, smart alternatives, which is applicable for all our Super Swift series. So we have identified the three main problems. Low displacement to length ratio, insufficient capabilities, poor focus on human factor. So for conventional designs, uh, the low displacement to length ratio. So the easiest way for conventional designs to achieve higher speeds is to have a low displacement to length ratio. On the other hand, this results in extreme discomfort uh, due to undesirable motions and behavior in severe sea states. Conventional high-speed crafts will be more vulnerable to behavioral aspects such as poaching, surfing, and bow diving phenomenon. In extreme case, it may lead to devastating impacts such as injury or in an unfortunate event, I mean, unfortunate event loss of life. As a result, the operators will experience high vertical acceleration at high speeds. Several reports have shown that the Mark V uh, SOC used by the US Navy experienced high vertical acceleration of up to 10 G, causing injury due to high exposure to shock and vibration, discomfort, and performance degradation to the crew. So conventionally, the planing hull was dismissed as a design due to its uh, ability, I mean, inability to be able to perform well at rough seas. But over the years, it was been re-evaluated, and it is shown to be able to perform uh, with improved sea keeping characteristics due to proper uh, selection of how and also uh, proportions of loading. So the motivation for us is to reduce the wave making resistance. So the, the, mo the Eureka movement is to develop advanced how forms to lower uh, viscosity uh, resistance. By incorporating innovative designs, optimization techniques, and combining principles of hydrodynamics, we are able to provide a wide range of different hulls capable of achieving incredible speeds. 
So we have adopted several methods, which I'll be sharing to, uh, with you know, the uh, audience shortly as part of our smart how forms. So insufficient capability. So speed has always been the main salient factor when it comes to high speed crafts. The focus has always been the speed, but not the capabilities. So conventional high speed crafts are typically very one dimensional and not flexible enough to respond to the ever changing and unpredictable threats. It is unavoidable in the past as the conventional designs are extremely objective driven. So several aspects, uh, aspect, uh, were deployed, sorry, several as, uh, assets were deployed to serve different purpose. So they were all very mono, uh, one dimensional. So given the size and speed, there's also a, limit, a limited space to cater for self-defense and support capabilities, such as search and rescue. Modern day designs should, be, uh, should cater to allow not only speed to respond and to react fast, but to be able to handle such situations swiftly. So designers have to outsmart marine time threats by ensuring that the vessels are highly flexible and ever ready to address to those needs. So, poor focus on human factors. The focus has always been on the design requirements and the concept of operation, but not the human comfort and economics. I was privileged to be part of the Republic of Singapore Navy. So I'm a, I was a coxswain on board one of the fast boats. And I understand if there's a lack of human comfort and economics, it will hinder the operational workflow. The crew will spend most of the time on board. They are very likely to suffer the long-term effects due to injury if it's not well managed. Effects caused by high vertical acceleration and constant exposure to noise level beyond permissible exposure limits. Crew communication are often conducted at the late, uh, crew communication between the designers and the operators are always conducted at a very late stage, resulting in design iteration for the, uh, to ensure that they're able to meet the uh, design requirements and operational needs. These iterations can be avoidable if earlier communications were made. So in summary, human factors are to be considered of equal importance because the crew are the most important asset on board. The success of the operation is dependent on the crew's well-being. Design experience. In ST engineering, we have designed remarkable, uh, notable designs with track records. Here are a few examples. The 26 meter specialized marine craft, the Swift Coast, uh, sorry, the Swift Coast Petrol, and the inshore petrol vessel. We constantly question ourselves, how can we be better? How can we offer the client something that is beyond the common norm? And therefore, we set a challenge to design a series of high-speed crafts able to achieve speeds beyond 60 knots and cater for different kinds of operation, demands, and providing alternatives to meet stringent operational requirements. By combining the elements we are able to develop a new range of designs to meet these expectations from our clients. And I present to you ST Engineering Marine's Super Swift series. We have identified the range, of seven, range from 17 meters to 35 meters, which will be the most suitable length for frontline coastal defense force. Several different configurations were adopted to meet operational requirements based on the feedback that we have gathered over the years. ST Engineering's design efforts in the development of the Super Swift series were acknowledged when we were awarded with the contract to design, construction, and maintain a series of fast petrol boats based on the Super Swift 23 design towards near 2018. The new series of petrol boats will replace the existing older petrol boats so as to strengthen its capability against marine time threats, which is meant for ultra high speed operation up to 60 knots. 
with enhanced maneuverability and crew comfort. How was it done? So ST Engineering developed the following smart initiatives to overcome conventional design problems. The smart hull form, crew focus, and multi-role capability. Smart hull forms. So the starting point when it comes to the development of the several smart hull forms that I'll be sharing with you know, the audience shortly, were based on a well-proven hull form, 17 meters planing hull, which was used for a yacht back in the early 90s. She was well tested and proven in model tests and sea trials. Her performance was deemed satisfactory and would serve as an excellent platform to begin our smart hull form development. So we considered a few options, the step hull, the air cavity hull, and the enhanced hard chine planing hull. Both the step and air cavity hull aims to bring down the resistance performance so as to achieve the desirable high speeds that I've mentioned earlier. On the other hand, for the enhanced hard chine planing hull, it serves a different purpose and objective, which I'll be sharing with I mean, the, the audience shortly in my later slides. So the step how, several iterations were carried out through CFD to properly to identify the optimal position of the step, the location of the step. Several iterations were made and carried out, and upon confirmation of the position of the step, we put the results to test by conducting model tests to validate her performance. The results, uh, the results have shown that it's able to improve approximately 7 to 10% in terms of the resistance at above 50 knots. And the placement of the step has also resulted in better restoring moment as reported in the model test report. The air cavity how? We are not satisfied with just 7 to 10% resistance reduction. The team explored alternative means to further bring down the resistance by considering a steady flow of air cavity with the aim to bring frictional resistance between the hull and water. To better understand the effects of such a concept, the team developed a preliminary air cavity hull and put to test by going through model tests. And the preliminary design shows that a, a reduction of 2 to 5% of uh, resistance performance as compared to the original hull. The results are extremely promising and therefore the decision was to go a step further to have to explore what can be done, what can be improved, how can it be further enhanced. And so intensive studies were carried out and iterations were made through CFD to, prop to properly conclude the final air cavity position before conducting a model test to revalidate the performance of the air cavity hull. The modi modification result in significant res resistance reduction of approximately 17 to 20%. Considering surface piercing propellers using the same power required for the original hull, the speed reduction is approximately four to five knots, which is a significant improvement. So, we have also considered the water jets configuration. Why? So, we reach out to some of our valuable potential customers and some propose to consider a water jet propulsion configuration due to their operational needs. Confident with the outcome that we have already achieved, we perform slight modifications to the hull form, the air cavity hull form, and we carry out uh, model tests to validate the performance uh, using the water jets. The model test has shown that the resistance performance uh, improved by 12 to 17% as compared to the original hull using the same power uh, used for the water, uh, original hull. We are able to have a significant reduction of three to four knots. So the enhanced hard chine planing hull What's so different? It serves a different purpose. The purpose of this is to provide a simple 
solution, a simple solution to better understand the shortfalls of the original how form. We want to know how it perform when it is model tested beyond its initial 45 knots. So we did a CFD study up to 55 knots, 60 knots to better understand the behavior of the how form. And what is shown in the CFD is that we have observed low pressure develop at the bottom of the how and it grows as it is traveling at high speeds. Such low pressure points will risk the uh, craft to be dynamically in, instable at high speeds. And therefore, the team decided to examine her how lines to overcome the low pressure points. So we have identified the low pressure zone and we evaluate we look into the design and we have a better understanding as of what can be done, what is the root cause, what is the pain point. And what was observed is that it is probably it is due to the water line stuck into the towards the transom. And therefore, a simple solution was carried out to make the keel line flat along the baseline, as you can see uh, in the image, the original hull and the enhanced hard chine planing hull. We conduct CFD to ensure, I mean, to run analysis to see if it works. And indeed, we have observed that the low pressure points are significantly reduced when it's traveling at high speeds, 55 knots, 60 knots. Based on the CFD that we have conducted, we, we go ahead and we went for model testing to validate her performance and to and it is proven that the results shown correspond very well with what was simulated in the CFD. On top of the resistance, propulsion, sea keeping tests that we conducted, a series of turning circle simulations were carried out at high speeds. And the modifications that I've uh, shown earlier on has resulted in better dynamic stability, even at high speeds. Our client was extremely pleased with the results of the turning circle So smart initiatives, when it comes to crew focus. Crew on board, crew will spend most of the time on board two areas, the breach and the accommodation. It is important for these two areas to be as quiet as possible. The breach is where all the navigation and communication takes place. Crew will be required to respond to every single command and distress signal within seconds. If the bridge design is not well considered, it will disrupt key messages which will influence both decision making and the operation of the vessels. Crew accommodation is where the crew take short intervals of breaks when they're out at sea. These pockets of time are important for them to, uh, to rest and to keep themselves alert when they're at watch. When I mention ideal noise level 75 decibels at 100% MCR, so with reference to MSC 33791 code on noise levels on board ships, it is defined as 65 decibels for the bridge and 60 decibels for the crew. But do take note that this is not applicable for high speed craft. And therefore, ST Engineering deems that 75 decibels at 100% MCR will be an ideal noise level to achieve for both the bridge and the crew accommodation to address to those needs. We have performed a series of noise prediction analysis to better understand the performance of the Super Swift series. Using the Super Swift Twin 3, we are able to better understand and better appreciate if the 75 decibels goal is achievable, and if not, how can it be done? We've come up with several concepts, concepts to bring down the noise, noise levels. Rather than to be just purely dependent on the acoustic insulation, which will drastically increase the weight, we explore alternative solutions by considering a suspended deck house. The concept is to fit an isolated deck house on a resilient mount 
which is installed on the deck. That way, a box is created to isolate the vibration from the vessel structure. The spring created by the acoustic insulation will be able to reduce noise levels of approximately 8 to 10 decibels, which was validated through our uh, noise prediction analysis that we have carried out. Although the results were extremely favorable, the weight impact of approximately 1% of the entire displacement of the vessel may not be suitable for crafts operating at such high speeds. As we know, increase in weight will therefore impact the speed, more power and impact the speed. By taking the weight and noise into consideration, we have performed a series of trade-off study to balance the two key design aspects. We have successfully reconfigured the concept to develop a semi-floating cabin, which will allow 50% reduction as compared to the fully suspended uh, cabin and allow a reduction of 4 to 5 decibels. Our noise prediction study shows that by considering such a semi-floating cabin for both the bridge and the uh, accommodation, we are able to achieve 75 decibels at 100% MCR. I'm looking at speeds of up to 60 knots. And therefore, we are confident that such a concept will be able to meet and overcome those challenges that were previously uh, faced for conventional vessels. So low vertical acceleration. I've touched on the adverse effects of high vertical acceleration several times earlier on. Our methods and design efforts have, has proven effective. Based on our results extracted from the monotest, we are able to achieve less than 1G at 40 knots at slight, and slightly more than 1G at 55 knots. Compared to the Mark 5, which was reported at approximately 10G, we have effectively minimized the possibilities of crew injury and fatigue at high speeds due to vertical acceleration. Crew focus. Conventional high-speed craft layouts are generally very compact and it obstructs the workflow of the crew. Many of times, the crew may even injure themselves as they move from one point to the other. Crew may be required to perform simultaneous roles and a badly considered layout will not be ideal. It is important for the crew to operate in a comfortable working environment. How to ensure such a comfortable environment? It is to, we have to ensure that there is sufficient headroom and walkway width. We propose for our design to have at least a headroom of 2 meters, 2 meters of clear height and approximately 800 millimeters of uh, passageway width to overcome such a problem. You have about five minutes left, please. Thank okay. you. Sure. So all the controls are carefully considered and well, uh, well within reach so as to ensure that the operator, even with seated position, will be able to um, reach out to all the controls. We constantly seek feedback from the operators through 3D walkthroughs and physical mockups to better understand how it works. Because as designers, we may not be able to fully appreciate the um, operational needs and uh, requirements. And most importantly, shock absorb, uh, absorbing seats are also considered to ensure that the crew are well strapped down when the crew is traveling at high speeds. So multi-role capabilities. The Super Swift, Super Swift series designs are designed not only to achieve high speeds, but to be extremely flexible when it comes to respond, responding to unexpected situations. For the bigger vessels, Super Swift 23, 26, and 35, we have considered both firefighting and search and rescue capabilities as a potential option. Equipped with such add-ons, it will enable the Super Swift series to take up multiple roles to attend to different needs. Time will not be wasted and rescue operations can be carried out even before the situation gets 
onwards. Our in-house quick launch and recovery system is designed to carry small vessels such as uh, ribs and unmanned surface vessels with the ability to launch and recover these vessels quickly, even at different sizes. So this has been considered for the bigger crafts, the Super Swift 26 and 35. So this will ensure that the Super Swift series is well equipped with the necessary capabilities to not only, a, uh, not only achieve high speeds, but to be highly flexible to address to the ever-changing, unpredictable threats. Thank you. The first question was from James. Uh, James, do you want to uh, unmute yourself? James Calver, do you want to unmute yourself and ask this question directly? Hi, Kenneth. Uh, thank you very much for that. That was, that was very interesting. Touched on a lot of interesting areas. Um, I, I was interested in uh, the water jet air cushion hull. Uh, I was wondering whether in your model tests, whether you saw any air ingestion into the tunnels, either from the uh, ventilation from the shine or ingesting any of the air cushion. Mm, the results were very good. Uh, such phenomena were not observed. And that's why we are confident that the water jets will be able to serve its purpose. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question from Alexander. Alexander, uh, are you here? Do you want to ask this question directly? Thank you, Lee, for good presentation. Uh, please tell me, what will be behavior of such type of half on the waves? Uh, maybe more acceleration additional, maybe more resistance or less to compare with uh, um, usual uh, formal calls. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I, can you repeat your question? I, I didn't catch your question. I'm so sorry about that. What will be behavior of such type of how on the waves? Uh, accordingly, acceleration or additional resistance? So uh, which hull are you talking about? Because uh, we have presented three hulls. Um, I mean, the smart hulls, the step hull, the air cavity hull, and the enhanced uh, planning hull. So is there any hull, particular hull, that you uh, would like to address to with regards to this question? Or it applies to all? Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Yeah, I presume it's for the air cushion. Uh, if you just make a comment about the air cushion vessel, so how it will respond to the waves. Uh, again, I, 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 air, I... Air cushion? No, 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 thank you very much, Lee. thank you. Okay, sorry. I... <laughs> All right, okay, so let's, let's, let's move on. Um, the next question was from uh, Andres. Andres, are you here? Uh, yes, hello. Yeah. Please go Hello. ahead with your question. Hi, Kenneth. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. I was wondering, since you, you saw when you evaluated your hull and the CFT that it wasn't really optimal for the actual uh, speed and operation you were, you were doing. So when you, when you did your changes, you experienced quite a lot of improvements. Uh, so I was wondering if you managed to compare your new smart design to an actual proven good design that are proven on the market or if you just did you did you base this on the on the smart or the this hull that you took from the 90s uh ran it in 50 knots and saw that there are possible improvements to be made and uh, we present here quite quite hard improvements uh, but it, if you study the hull shape as you did in cfd you can see that it, it's not really optimal for that condition from from the start so mm -hmm. i would say it's quite easy to present uh, a solution compared to that hull have you conducted comp uh, comparisons to other references um we compared with some of the hulls that we have designed i mean always on our proven hull forms you know that we have delivered so because um, the data that's available uh, may not be sufficient for us to do too much uh, comparison, but nevertheless, we compared with all the other how forms that we have, that it's well-proven, well-tested. Uh, well well 
So, in when to answer to your question is was the was the how form evaluated and compared with other how forms? My answer to you is no, but we just um, I mean indeed it was a simple solution to simply just uh, modify the how form back you know that was used in the nineties, but because back then the focus was more on the speeds below 45 knots. So when we pushed the mark, you know, um, up to 60 knots, so this phenomenon was something that uh, was observed after we did the CFD. And we felt that, that by doing that sort of modification, that would be the most uh, economical way and also the most straightforward way to make use and leverage on the advantages of the, the well-tested proven how form back in the 90s and to meet the speed requirements and to overcome those shortfalls that I've identified. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. So the next question was from Phil uh, Moxley. Phil, are you here? Uh, I am, thank you again yes. mm -hmm. for your presentation. Um, I Just looking at the figures that you put up for the acceleration of your whole form compared to the more traditional whole form, the acceleration levels that you've presented seem very low, given from what we know uh, of, of boats at sea. Uh, I wondered if you could comment on how you'd arrived at these. Uh, apologies if I missed that in the presentation. Those figures were uh, obtained from the model tests. So we actually brought the, I mean, uh, it's through, obtained through the model test results. So it was, op we, yeah, so yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, Phil, I hope you're satisfied with the, with the answer. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question from James, uh, James Twenibov. Are you here? Do you want to ask this question directly? Yeah, I'm here, Dimitri. Yeah, um, thanks, ahead. Lee, um, for your presentation. Um, my question is, um, I presume the whole material that you're talking about um, using for your um, SS series is Ali or GRP. And with such a high speed of up to 60 um, knots um, for your SS series, um, what measures have been put in place to kind of mitigate the um, potential issues that could um, ensue from the whole structural integrity from slamming? So um, to answer to your question, yes, the hull forms were based on aluminum hull forms. So the track records, as you can see, were all aluminum hull forms. So we have a good track record when it comes to the experience and the knowledge required to overcome such uh, pressures. But for our how for the Super Swift 23, we have conducted a global analysis, global structural analysis, to ensure that uh, phenomena such as twistings are avoided. So to ensure that all the plate thickness, the structures, structures is well-sized to overcome and to ensure that um, there's no adverse effect. I mean, through these high speeds and yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question from uh, Livio Deltin. Livio, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much for your presentation. I like it a lot. I just wanted to know something more, if it is possible, about uh, the estimated fuel consumption or endurance in hours of the two configurations of the smart high forms for surface piercing propellers and for water jet propulsion. Have you any data available on it? Um, we will be able to share. Would it be possible if I were to uh, share with you the, I mean, the details separately? Uh, because I offhand, I can't remember the exact figures. I'll, yeah, sure, I'll look no it up. Problem. No problem, anytime. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the next question from Robert. Robert, are you here? Uh, yes, hopefully you can hear me. Um, thank you yeah. very much for the presentation. Um, so with the superstructure being mentioned on the resilient mounts, um, do you see these as uh, basically being fitted for life of the vessel um, or a, a maintainable, replaceable uh, item? And how do you monitor them to ensure they don't fail? fail? Um, obviously being a, a very high speed craft, uh, and potentially subject to quite a lot of um, heavy shock loads. There's a there's obviously a risk that um, they could be um, loaded outside 
I presume they normally rate it around six to ten Gs. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if they get uh, regularly loaded to higher than that, uh, they could um, get damaged. Um, so I just wondered, uh, in terms of the practicality of the press hall, um, how you consider that? Of course, because first of all, we have to ensure that the design itself is well managed in terms of the G-force, that's one. And number two is that, as I mentioned, the uh, suspended hull from the floating cap, uh, sorry, the floating uh, cabin concept, we will put it in, uh, into the mouse and uh, so if there's a need to replace the shock mouse, we can actually remove them. So um, this is the, con the, the concept that we have in mind. So because we take into consideration that the vessel is of relatively low, uh, will encounter relatively low vertical acceleration, and therefore the risk of uh, damage, damaging of the resilient mouse will be relatively low. But in the event, in the misfortunate event that there is a need to replace, then uh, we will have to remove the suspended deck house and to replace them. So that would be that is something that food for thought for us to consider. Thank you very much. And the last question, uh, if we just can address it quickly from Kubus. Kubus, are you here? Do you want to ask this question directly? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yep. Uh, thanks, Kenneth, for the presentation. It was really great. Just okay. wanted to find out, I saw that you have tested tanks plus CFD, made some changes in CFD. Uh, was, there a, did you, was there a difference in the results versus CFD and tank testing? There was. I mean, uh, I would say that it was a negligible difference as we know that it is um, very difficult to ensure that it corresponds very well. I'm looking at a 3 to 5% difference. But nevertheless, those uh, differences are still within reach. Uh, it's easily managed, and therefore we are very satisfied with the results. The tank testing results or the CFD results? The CFD results compared to the tank test. Okay, fantastic. Thanks a lot.